Hey guys, so I'm going to be doing a Pride Month book recommendation videos. I have read all of these books and I found them all to be awesome, so I wanted to share them with you because it is Pride Month and let's all go be prideful, shall we? So I'm just going to get started. I will be putting the titles of the books and the timestamps down below so that way if you see a title that you're interested in but don't feel like watching the whole video, you don't have to. The first book I'm going to talk about is The Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern. This book is one of my favorite books of all time. It follows Zachary Ezra Rollins. He finds a book that's mysterious. No barcode, no author, but he takes it and he reads it. He reads stories about little bunny-eared girls and a harbor with a sky with no stars, key collectors, acolytes, and more. It takes him on a whirlwind adventure of not only self-discovery, but just a giant adventure in itself. And I just, I adore this book. Uh, Zachary may find a little bit of love, maybe not, but you know what? Just, I'd recommend it to literally everyone that I meet. Next we have Carmilla by Jay Sheraton Lafanu. This book originally came out in 1872. It actually inspired Dracula, which I believe it came out in 1897. I'll put up the correct dates but this book is a gothic novella and it starts out with a carriage crash and a nobleman taking in a you know hurt and sick girl who may not actually be as hurt as she says she is and may be trying to seduce her daughter for her vampiric ways Next we have On a Sunbeam by Tilly Walden. This book is a graphic novel and it is very beautiful, very detailed. You follow May and her new friends, um, uh, should I say company, which she joins. They go around and fix things like dilapidated monuments and temples. And while she's doing that, not only is she trying to find herself, she's looking for her long lost love. I do have a book review for this. I will put it in the cards. This book is very interesting considering that there are actually no men in this book. There are only women and non-binary folk. So I thought that was really cool. One of the main reasons I loved it so much. Next we have Written in the Stars by Alexandria Belfleur. This is kind of a romance comedy book. I thought it was really funny. I thought the book was well written. You follow Darcy and Elle. You actually get to see the book from both of their perspectives. They are, one of them is looking for a relationship, one of them is not, and this is that like whole fake relationship trope, and I really enjoyed it. I read it twice back to back, well listened to it twice back to back. Um, I had that one as audiobook and it was very good. Um, there is some adult content that I really liked, <laughs> and I will put in the cards my spoiler-free review of it. On to another graphic novel, Blue is the Warmest Color by Julie Marrow, or Morrow. This book follows Clementine, um, a girl who is, a, I believe, a junior in high school, and she has an openly gay best friend, and she is struggling with her sexuality, and then she meets a woman who is a little bit older, and things go from there. This book is mainly about love and loss. It is beautiful. It will make you cry. Just hands down you're gonna cry so there's that next we have the invisible life of Addie larue by v.e schwab this is about a girl that was born in the late 1600s and she gets cursed and has to spend her life not only never dying but never being able to make a mark i did struggle whether i was going to put this book on this list because in this book Addie, because she's lived so long, the idea of straight or gay or whatever is just not a thing. She can have that connection physical, uh, mental, emotionally with, with anyone. Um, but it's, it's very minute in the book, um, the same sex relationships that she has or that we know of that she has because again this is like she's lived for many years and I'm sure that having her life her complete life told moment by moment, person by person, um, in one book would be a very large, uh, book. 
Um, I did really enjoy it. I do have a book review on it, so I'll put that in the cards as well. Next we have The Road to You by Harper Bliss. This book is about two women, uh, one Catherine, one Allie. They meet in college and they just kind of have a rocky relationship through the entire book and they kind of have to figure themselves out and each other's out. This is one of those like enemies to lovers type stories. It's very good. Um, I really like it. There is some adult content in this book, so there's a warning. Next we have Snowfalls by Jerry Hill. This book reminded me of a Hallmark movie. It was cozy. There was a little bit of drama. Um, you have Jennifer who's on her way to a writer's conference and she's on a mountain she shouldn't be on because the snow is going to trap her there and kill her. And there's another woman named Catherine who is actually living on the mountain trying to keep away from people and be a hermit and she saves her and they have to spend a lot of time together. So that's all I can say about that without completely ruining the story. But I thought it was really good. It was so cuddly and cozy and it was winter for a lot of the books so I felt a little chilly so that was pretty cool too. Next we have Gentleman Jack, The Real Ann Lester. This book is about Ann Lester. She was a real person so this is a non-fiction book. In 1834 she made history by getting married, being the first recorded uh, same-sex marriage and it was like a big thing and it was just she was a remarkable person. I will say that some ports, some points in this book, the way it's written, is just kind of dry because they're just general thoughts. Next, we have Over the Top, A Raw Journey to Self-Love by Jonathan Van Ness. I listened to this. These are all his own thoughts and words. It's all about his life and his roots, where he came from, all the things he had to go through to make him the person he is today. I absolutely love this man. And I recommend this if you like to read about people's lives because it was beautiful and heart-wrenching and even at sometimes really funny. I'm gonna do a two-in-one here so if you like Avatar The Last Damn Vendor and you're really into that universe we have Avatar The Rise of Kyoshi and any of the Legend of Korra comics. So uh, Kyoshi and uh, Korra are both uh, bisexual and there is some stuff that happens there. Both of uh, the Legend of Korra comics are amazing and both of the Rise of the both of the Kyoshi books because there's two now there's a sequel to um, that I forget the name of. I'll put it up here but they're really good stories if you're into the universe like it's so good. So pick those up if you're into the universe and oh god you're gonna love them. Next we have The Haunting of Hill House. This was first published in I believe 1959 or 1960 and for the time this was really scary and in this book you are following Eleanor and a few other people that are in this house and it's haunted not haunted like the show that's completely different so um, to me I really like this book a lot because of Theo so Theo in the book talks about how she got into a fight with her roommate so it's it's uh it's makes you feel like the roommate is a living girlfriend but she's also kind of you feel like she might have feelings for Eleanor in the book and I just I really like that about the book I read this book for the very first time a couple years ago and I think I gave it four stars but next we have happy endings are all alike by Sandra Scopatone I don't know if I'm saying that right this is the first LGBT related book I had ever read. I read this in like eighth grade. I believe this came out in 1978 or nine. So this book is kind of, so it's like, it's like two girls, um, that are, uh, kind of finding themselves, uh, Peggy and Janet, and they are kind of finding themselves. And there's also like a thriller, element to it um, if you can tell by the cover um, this book is really hard to talk about without giving everything away so I'm gonna leave it at that um, if it is it was written a while ago so it may seem just a little 
oh yeah, okay, I get it. But it's, it's a really, really good book. Very suspenseful. Very, um, I mean, I guess for the 70s it was considered hot. But, I mean, for me at eighth, in 8th grade it was considered hot too. So, try it. Next we have Dare, Truth, or Promise. I also read this one in high school. I super, super loved it. Um, it's, it follows Willa and Louie. Willa wants to be a lawyer and Louie wants to be a chef and they just want to, you know, graduate and move on with their lives and then they fall in love and it is fast love. But because they love each other, everything that they've ever thought, everything that, everything they were ever taught, their, their families, their religion, everything is put into question and it's something they have to work out. And it's a very short book. I don't know how many pages it is, but it's... It's a really good book. I got this copy from a friend. I think, I don't remember if she gave it to me or I borrowed it, but either way, it's mine now. <laughs> so <laughs> next we have, they both die in the end. This book is one of those books that you, you want to read because it's so good, but you know, you're going to cry because you're just, it's going to make you cry. Well, I cry a lot y'all. So like this follows Mateo and Rufus. And they both get a text saying that you guys are going to die in 24 hours or within 24 hours. And they spend their last hours together. So, yeah. Last but certainly not least, we have Annie on My Mind by Nancy Garden. This book was originally released in, I believe, 1982. I actually got this one from my school's library, which is really cool because when I was going to school, like, you had to be hush-hush about being gay, which I wasn't. But still. Anyway, so this book follows Liza, who is 17. She and her younger brother, Chad, are going to this very prestigious uh, school that is kind of like a private school. And she meets a girl named Annie, obviously. And they become friends, and then they become more than friends. And because they're going to this school, and it's, I believe there's a lot of religious stuff going on at the school, too. It's been a while since I've read it, so maybe read it for yourself. But they, there's a lot of trials and tribulations they have to go through just to be together and it is it's thrilling it was thrilling for me when i read it for the first couple times when i was younger but it's a really good story um it's definitely a coming of age story i would think because they are like 17 but it's it's a beautiful book y'all like i love that book and now now i want to reread it <laughs> Um, the cover that I'm showing is actually the, I think it's the original cover of the book. The cover that, this was actually the original cover I read, um, but the cover I have now is something more new agey with like a photograph or something because I let somebody borrow it and I never got it back. Thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far, maybe just, you know, give me a little heart emoji so I know someone watched it till the end because I know it's very long. I really hope you guys enjoyed this and have a wonderful, beautiful Pride Month. Bye.